Have you ever heard of the term endocrine disruptor and wondered what it means? Well, your endocrine system is a complicated messenger system that uses hormones to coordinate a variety of processes in your body. An endocrine disruptor is a chemical that disrupts some of these processes by mimicking or blocking these hormones. So the question becomes, can endocrine disruptors affect fertility? Well, stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Melanie McGrice and I'm a specialist fertility and prenatal dietitian. My goal is to help couples understand the power of good nutrition at every stage of their fertility and pregnancy journey to give their babies the best start possible. If you're interested to learn more, check out some of my other videos and connect with me on social media. All of the details are in the comments box below. Now, in this video, I'm going to discuss diet-related endocrine disruptors and how you can best reduce your exposure to preserve your fertility. The female reproductive system is governed by hormones and endocrine disruptor chemicals are able to disrupt these hormones to such an extent that they can affect your fertility. Unfortunately, endocrine disruptor chemicals are found literally everywhere from the soil to our water and even the air that we breathe. While we're not able to avoid them completely, the key is to reduce our exposure as much as possible. So let's look at the top four diet-related endocrine disruptors and what you can do to lower your risk. Number one, pesticides. Pesticides is the umbrella name given to substances that help to control pests, whether they're insects or weeds. Pesticide residue can be found on fresh fruits and veggies. That's why you need to thoroughly wash or scrub all your fresh produce under fresh running water. You need to do this even if you're not planning on eating the peel, because when you cut or peel the produce, the pesticides can enter. Many people ask me if they need to use soap, bleach or a commercial detergent. And although this sounds logical, there's no need and in some cases, some of these detergents can contain en additional endocrine disruptors themselves. Now number two is heavy metals. There are a number of heavy metals that we're exposed to, including arsenic, lead and mercury. However, the most widely consumed of the three is probably mercury in the form of methylmercury because it's commonly found in the fish that we eat. The largest source of mercury contamination originates from coal burning power plants, where it eventually makes its way into the environment, especially major bodies of water. Once in the water, it gets absorbed by the algae at the start of the food chain. Through a process of bioaccumulation, the further up the food chain we go, the higher the concentrations of mercury that are present. This is why we're advised not to eat predatory fish such as shark, ray, swordfish, barramundi, gemfish, orange ruffy, ling and southern bluefin tuna. Instead, choose smaller non-predatory fish such as mackerel, silver wahoo, Atlantic salmon, canned salmon or canned tuna in oil, herrings and sardines. It's important to remember that although mercury is obviously not great, the health benefits of fish far outweigh the negatives and so it is perfectly healthy and in fact good to have fish two to three times a week. On a slight side note, if you're not sure how to incorporate fish into your diet, download my fertility meal plan at melaniemcgrice.com slash fertility. Now number three is dioxins. Dioxins originate as a byproduct of industrial processes, but can also be emitted by volcanoes and forest fires and are known as persistent environmental pollutants. This means that once they've been released into the environment, they don't go away for a very long time. Once they're absorbed by the body and stored into the fatty tissue, it can take more than 22 years to be completely excreted. Up to 90% of our exposure to dioxins comes from our food, mainly meat, dairy, fish and shellfish. 
The best way that you can reduce your exposure is to trim the fat off meat products and eat a variety of foods to make sure that you're not getting a significant amount of exposure from one source. And number four is BPA. Now, have you ever seen a plastic container or bottle promising to be BPA free? That's the last endocrine disruptor on our list. BPA or bisphenol A is a type of plasticizer that gives flexibility to plastic products. In the last decade, some restrictions have been placed on the use of BPA because of concerns that it can be leaching out and contaminating whatever you've stored in the container. So manufacturers are looking at, for suitable replacements. Unfortunately, the research on the effect of these alternatives have on our health is minimal, which means that we don't actually know if they're safer than BPA itself. In light of this, I personally think that it's a better option to invest in some glass containers, which we know are safe. And if you do use plastic containers, remember that they're not suitable for heating. So don't use them in your microwave to heat up your leftovers. Now, as I said, we're not going to escape being exposed to these and other endocrine disruptors, but we can focus on reducing our exposure. So if you've got a burning question on this topic, go ahead and pop it into the comments box below. After watching this video, I hope that you feel better equipped to limit your exposure to these endocrine disruptors. That's all from me today, but I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Have you ever heard of a, sorry, messed up already. <laughs> Hello, my, no, on this topic, if you do, oh, sorry. <laughs>